Welcome to Concordia on Air. My name is Magner. And I'm Desi. And on tonight's show... On news, there's a new tarantula species. In sports, we have two Mayak shoutouts. In A&E, Travis Kelsey. And Taylor Swift. And a special interview with Ian Shiel. All that and more on Concordia on Air. So, how's it been going, Magner? Well, I'm still alive, so that's the good news. <laughs> that is a plus. Another day, another dollar. Yes. Is that the same? Yeah, I, I wish I had another dollar each day. I'm probably very sure. But no, it's been okay. Yeah? Exams yeah. are still coming up. Oh, yeah. In a true. couple of weeks. Some classes already had my first exam. Oh. Yeah. Exams. I have not even thought about that. Uh, that's... <laughs> That's oh, I heard there's a new uh, spider species. A okay. new spider? Yeah, tarantula. Tarantula? Tarantula, yeah, yeah. What is a tarantula? It's, it's a kind of a hairy spider, like a big one. Oh, I thought it was a bird. Uh, me too. But I learned otherwise today, so... Yeah. I, oh, I heard about the turkeys on Concordia. Have oh. you seen them recently? No. Where did they go? Well, we suspect that NDSU maybe have something to do with it, but... Or oh, MSUM, but who knows? Or Emma. Or Emma. Emma. Who, yeah, maybe it's Emma. Emma back there taking the turkeys. Yeah. She, she need them for food. <laughs> or I think that she might be like making an army to overthrow. The t-shirts? Mm, maybe. Yeah. The they will, they rule this campus. So she's making an army of these turkeys mm -hmm. wobbling all over. So she does need to take the exams. It's oh. actually really smart. You know, I actually had an idea. What if there was a battle between the squirrels on campus and the turkeys? Who do you think would win? That's a good question. I think, uh, I think the ambush advantage is on the squirrels because they can just go into a trash can. You know, That's true. That's every true. Every single place we're going on this campus, there's always one or two squirrels in the trash can jumping out immediately when people walk by. Oh, true. <laughs> Maybe munching on something in there. I don't know. Yeah. Old maize fries, some old chicken nuggets. M Maybe they get maize fries superpower so they can overcome the turkeys. <laughs> Whoa. That is just blowing my mind right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to figure out how this fight is going to... I tried to envision it. All these like squirrels, like probably like 20 wobbling turkeys, and then you have like 100 squirrels just going to clash. <laughs> that's, that's something. <laughs> But you know what I really want to hear more of is yeah. this new tarantula. Oh yeah, I don't know too much about it. I just heard this around campus. If you're afraid of spiders, don't worry, it's only one. Oh, only one, <laughs> only one. The chance of you meeting him is like, uh, how many dorms are One to one, 2,000 something, don't worry. Right. Well, let's hop over to Kay on news to hear about this new tarantula. Welcome to News, I'm Kay, and on Monday, October 22nd, the 2023 to 2024 Culture event, Cultural Events Series will present the Oslo Chamber Choir in the Centrum. The concert starts at about 7.30 p.m., and Concordia College staff and students have free admission if they bring their ID to the door. A reception hosted by the Scandinavian Studies and Heritage Endowed Fund will be located in the atrium after the concert. I'm Brendan, and Concordia students have been invited to start project proposals to receive a Project for Peace Award. The program is a way for undergraduate students to have a funding opportunity to create projects that promote peace and bring attention to important conflicts. The, pro the program states that they are looking for talented students who are capable of independent work and who have a strong interest in pursuing peace. Interested students are directed to take an initial step by October 10th which is to email Dr. Ken Foster, Director of Community Engagement. Recently, a new tarantula species has been discovered in Thailand. When trying to research the, diver the diversity and distribution of tarantulas in southern Thailand, scientists found a spider with bright blue stripes on its legs. Now named the Taxidus bambus, the spider was originally found in a mangrove forest. Rather than the spider presumably having blue pigmentation on its legs, it actually has been found that it's biological photonic nanostructures. The species has gained the title of one of the rarest tarantula species, and researchers are looking to find more. The Homecoming Committee and CEC are banding together to create a new event called Merchant Movie. They will be showing the movie. We were actually going to show Barbie, but we're no longer showing Barbie. Um, we are showing the... Um, we're showing, I forget what it is, but uh, on Tuesday, October 10th at 8 p.m. in the Centrum. 
As a part of the event, they will be selling Cobber merch, including a Barbie Cobber shirt, which is really cute, uh, and a whiteout shirt for homecoming for the homecoming football game, as well as other Concordia merchandise. If you buy the merch, you will be able to pick it up at the movie event. A bobcat was recently spotted on the street of Fergus Falls, Minnesota. It was originally seen on the 25th of, the, of September, and the city is warning people to be aware. It's also been recommended that pet owners keep their animals on short leashes and that parents keep an eye on their small children. Bobcats are, more often than not, spotted in woodlands, and it is their primary living area. It's very rare for people to see bobcats in the wild, and even rarer for them to be seen walking around cities, according to the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. Fargo police have recently arrested a man who was going around to various businesses in the Fargo-Moorhead area and vandalizing them. Multiple reports were made on the man after windows at Steve's Package and SARS on, 22nd, on SARS of the 22nd of September. The suspect was apprehended after he was found two blocks over from where the event took place and attempts to contact the business owners have been made. There haven't been statements made about the owners of SARS as of yet, but according to VNL, the owner of Steve's package estimates the damage of his business alone will be around four thousand dollars. Yeah. We now we have A and E with Ross and Malik. Welcome to Inside Scoop on Taylor Swift and Kelsey. <laughs> Okay, Welcome to A&E tonight. My name is Malik. And I'm Ross. And let's talk about the biggest news of 2023. Well, maybe not the biggest, but definitely of like the last four days. Okay, like Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. That's crazy. Is he the new king of her heart? Maybe. Oh my gosh. I, I don't know how I feel about this one. I don't know how to feel about it either. So let's talk about it. So let's, we, talk, let's break it down. We heard that there were like rumors that they were... Dating. Back in July. Talking. July. Wow. July. That's Started in July. A lot of that's a lot of months. Yeah. How how do you so you don't know how to feel? So do you like know any more stuff about this situation? Well, she went to a base or football game. Oh my gosh, this is a football game. Football back game. on Sunday. Yes. And she was seen with her his mother. His mother? His mother. That's Crazy, oh my god. She was wearing like a little Chiefs like jacket yeah, and her. had like little red shoes that matched the outfit. It was very yeah. cute. And she, yeah, he was with her mother. Mother, that's crazy. Um, so I saw some news that like Travis Kelsey's like jersey sale went up after Taylor Swift was at the game. Yeah, his jersey sales. The NFL has only been covering Taylor Swift like Monday, Sunday and Monday. That was she, all they were talking about. She really is the woman of the year, the she, day. The decade, come on. The minute, if you will. Absolutely. She's the woman of the year. The woman of the year. So, I, let's talk about Taylor Swift and men. Okay. I just, what's going on? Well, she was dating Joe Alwyn for at, yeah. since at least 2017. Like, reputation was all about him. Yeah. Same with Lover. Yeah. And Folklore and Evermore came out. And then Midnight's, people rumored it to be about a breakup, but yeah. we didn't have it confirmed. Not confirmed. And then all of a sudden the heiress tour started. He was never there. Never there. And then she was seen with Maddie Healy of the 1975. Not Maddie Healy. Oof. Uh, I wonder girl. if he knows the sound of her heart. Probably. <sighs> Probably. Let's... Anyways, but then all of a sudden they were done. And yeah. now she's with him. So did you see that they got into a car together did after you, the game? Like the maroon convertible. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. I cannot believe that happened. I giggled at the like <laughs> photo of them at the stoplight when they were just sitting yeah. there. That was so silly. Such a, such a random photo to take of people. Yeah. Would but you want someone to take a picture of you at a red light? I would not. That's kind of a little scary. Yeah, me either. But I also can't drive, so... Yeah, I forgot about that one. <laughs> the struggles of a college yeah. student. But I guess now, like, the Chiefs have gone up. We've seen a lot yeah. of more involvement in the football field from the Swifties. Yeah, they won their game, too. Yeah, they won their game and go everything. Chiefs. Go, Chiefs. Don't you just love football? But maybe we should go talk about some real sports now. So we'll hand it over to sports. Hi, I'm Lizzie. And starting with this week's sports is volleyball and soccer for getting recognized by the Minnesota Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, better known as the MIAC. Kyle Lill was named this, the Volleyball Specialist of the Week. This was the first time Concordia's volleyball team has been recognized by the MIAC since 2015. 
Kyle Lule averaged 39 assists for the three games over the weekend, and this includes two wins for the conference against Mount McAllister and St. Mary's and dropping the third game against Central Iowa, which is non-conference. The volleyball team this year is overall 10-5 and five with this season. Hi, I'm Hope, and next up for we have women's soccer with their freshman Emma Shefflow. Emma has been recognized by the Mayak for being the Offensive Player of the Week with her three goals to help secure wins over the weekend. Emma Shefflow is the first player to get recognized by the Mayak since 2018. Women's soccer pulled out a big win against conference opponent McAllister, the score being 1-0. This is the first time the Cobbers beat McAllister since 2017. The soccer team is 3-3-1 overall with two game winning streak. And now football had a big win this week coming off a of bye week. Cobber football took the win over their opening conference game against St. Scholastica. The score in the final quarter was 49 to 16. In total, Cobbers had 221 passing yards compared to Scholastica's 203 and 292 rushing yards compared to Scholastica's 45. Cooper Mattern had two rushing yard touchdowns along with one touchdown from QB replacement Jersey Selzler. Cobber football is now 2-1 and, and will host Carlton on Saturday, September 30th. Lastly, we have both men and women's cross country. Women's cross country had their last meet at the running of the Crows meet, which was hosted by Carlton. A key runner for this meet was senior Elsie Heltvig, who was the number one finisher for the Cobbers with an average pace of 646 per mile for the 6K. Similarly, men's cross country raced at the running of the Crows meet as well. The two runners for the race was senior Tanner Olson and freshman Tyler Gross. The pair helped Concordia rank number 12 as they finished the race. Both men and women's cross country will be in Wisconsin Eau Claire at the Blue Gold Invitational. And now we have an interview with Ian Scheel. Olin Campus Center, there is an exciting project at foot. Concordia fourth year student Ian Scheel has been hard at work on a new art installation which he is completing for his senior thesis project. This mixed media sculpture set began as a simple conversation with Concordia faculty member Dwight Mickelson. Uh, yeah, so it started out as an idea. We were discussing um, just figuring out what kind of thing logistically could go in this space because um, it is a really big area and I'm one student and I have a year just about to build it. So it needed to be, you know, space filling but not so enormous I couldn't get it done. I think this, this experiment, Ian's experiment, is, is integrative and experimental and there's nothing more interesting in the arts to bring questions and intrigue and wonder to a space, especially a public space. Shot around some ideas, decided on one, made a um, mock-up maquette hanging above my table, um, presented that to uh, Allison, who is the building manager at the Science Center. Um, got the go-ahead from her. She said, yeah, love it, love the idea. Let's figure out how we're going to fund this. The inspiration to the 9-12 to 12 installation structures comes from early scientific drawings. The aim is to culminate every science so anyone in the ISE can relate and see their discipline in the forms. Anything. It's, it's all in there. And then once that, I'm comfortable with how much stuff is on the center, then is the task of cutting out all the pieces for the cage, printing all the corners, assembling the cage to make sure that works, taking it all apart again, and then sewing every corner of the cage to the corner to a, its corresponding corner on the sewn structure so that once it's actually time to assemble it over it in the science center all i have to do is take this big pillow which all of these plastic pieces are sewn onto and put all the struts all the edges into it and in that action it inflates up to its full size and is ready to be hung from the ceiling this body of art will be installed over spring break 2023 in the Integrated Science Center, so keep your eyes peeled as the sculptures make their way to the ceiling of the Jolicoeur Commons. I think it's really important to have art around the campus. In fact, I think it should be in almost every room of the campus in some way. Ian's work began on this project at the end of the 2021-2022 school year when he was awarded an ERSCA grant to see the project through. You know, there's a ton of art that comes out of this, the Olin Center for the Arts, so we want to find places in, on campus to display them in, and hopefully this project kind of opens the door to doing that more in the future. His work has only just begun, and the project will take the next six months to complete. There is excitement buzzing as a new piece of student art makes its home on campus. 
Hey, and we are back. So that was a lovely little video package um, where we got to hear fourth year Ian Scheel talk about um, an ongoing project. But today I'm here with fifth year Ian Scheel. Yes. Um, and we have some updates for that for that uh, that project that was going on. That uh, video is from about a year ago. So this has been an ongoing thing. And as of today, well, actually, as of a couple, a little while ago, it is officially done and installed. So first of all, I want to say hello to Ian. Thank you for coming into the studio. Hello. I'm super happy to have you here. Yeah, there have been a lot of cool things happening with you lately um, in terms of finally finishing up this very, very long, arduous process of putting up this art installation in ISC. So why don't you tell me a little bit about what Macroscope is and why you decided to put so much time into this. Now, I say that out of love because I think it's the coolest yeah. thing in the world. So why don't you tell me a little bit about what Macroscope is? Thank you, yeah. Uh, so hopefully not repeating myself from a year ago, obviously, I don't have a great Things memory. Have changed, of, too. Yeah, memory of what I said, and a lot has changed about the project since then. Most importantly, it being done yes, now. Um, so yeah, the macroscope was a, a sort of commission piece I did for the Science Center. It's about a two and a half year long mm -hmm. project. Uh, partially formed my thesis project for my um, art degree here at Concordia, um, but then uh, and I also it was a part of some. Um, undergraduate research uh, through the ERSCA um, program. Uh, but it was just a kind of something that I'm sure I mentioned in the video before, but uh, kind of just through discussing with Dwight, uh, the uh, professor of sculpture here mm -hmm. at uh, Concordia, about uh, something that should be put in that space over there. It was just a big empty kind of sterile mm -hmm. room uh, that needed something to go in there, and that discussion started uh, in my sophomore year. So That's amazing. Well, I feel like you're the perfect student to put art and science together because you're, what, neuroscience is your major still? Yes. Yes, awesome. So you're doing all sorts of this stuff already, just like in and out of the classroom. So I think it's really, really cool that they were able to say, hey, yeah, let's make science and art connect. Um, so the pieces themselves, um, we saw, saw a little bit earlier about what some of these pieces look. Can you describe to our, uh, to our viewers um, what the mac macroscope projects are, what are these giant hanging sculptures that are in ISC now? Where did you get the inspiration from? Basically, just, just tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, so those are the, the five pieces that are up in uh, the comments in the Science Center. Um, they're primarily sewn sculpture. Um, so as you saw in the video, working on, which was only the second one then, that was the, the uh, I don't know if you can see it, on, it's not on camera presently, but, um, basically big fabric uh, shapes uh, that are then suspended and supported by uh, these wooden cages that I built on the outside. And uh, the process kind of, or the way that they turned out was much less intended and kind of, it was just organically the way that it happened. Uh, we wanted, I needed to make something that was light and that would fill up a lot of space. Mm -hmm. um, so that put me in the direction of fabric and then well, but I can't just, I'm not just gonna hang some sad kind of bag <laughs> from the ceiling. Um, so then looking at ways to make structures that could support themselves really light and really strong. Um, and that's where those cages on the exterior of the, of the pieces um, came from. But all designed, 3D printed um, here on campus. Uh, and then all the wood is cut, uh, was cut by myself and Dwight. Um, and then, yeah, everything was just kind of sewn uh, and designed kind of procedurally. Each one kind of presented itself. Yeah. They, yeah, I didn't yeah. really start with anything, any one thing in mind um, at the beginning of each mm -hmm. piece. It was just kind of, well, how big is this one? Great. Now I know that. Let's, okay. what shape can I make that that size? And then that just you know, kind of a question and answer all the way love through. It. Yeah, I love it. Well, I've got to remember what you were saying at your, um, your, uh, your reception for this is that they're not specifically modeled after anything in particular. Like they're mm -hmm. kind of like, oh yeah, these look like vaguely sciencey shapes, but that's what's so fun about bringing the art side into it is they're not models, they are pieces of art. And so up yeah. to the viewer, what they see it as like, I looked at some of these and I was like, oh, that looks like a COVID virus or that looks like, uh, this looks like the universe, um, which I think is so fun. Um, and I think that's not something that you get to see in the world of science as much as you do in the world of art. A lot of times I feel like in science, things are the way that they present, whereas in art, um, 
um, you can really have that sort of freedom. So I think that's really cool. Um, in terms of how many how many days has this been installed in ISC four? This is what just like week two that you're on now? Yeah, yeah. Let's the see. Install was... officially went up the 11th. Yeah. So last so of Tuesday, September, yeah. and then the reception was, was last Tuesday. So yeah. Two and a half, three weeks. Awesome. So, what yeah. sort of what sort of feedback have you gotten? Have you gotten a chance to chat with anybody? Any like ISC students who are like, oh, I like that the, my space isn't boring, or even just the people who are uh, at who are at the reception to support you. Um, I mean, this was a long process. So. Yes. Yeah. It was a yeah two and a half year process. Yeah, um, and yeah, lots of feedback. Um, all good so far. Mm -hmm. um, especially at the reception. Of course, it's a little bit of a biased group. Um, but yeah, in conversation, people have been really excited about them. People have really enjoyed them. Uh, I think maybe too many people know that I made them to really say some, to say things if they didn't like them. But uh, generally, a positive uh, reception over there, uh, which has been really fun because I think, uh, you know, a lot of people who are spending a lot of time over there maybe don't think about the art that's on the wall um, because it's just, you know from the collection, maybe somewhat scientifically themed, but to have something that's pretty blatant and also yeah. hard to ignore. Yeah. Um, and especially from across campus too. Like it's yeah. not just IS, like you can see these through the windows from, from Olin. Like you can yeah. like, it, it's, it's visible for everyone, not just the people inside of ISC, which I yes. think is so yeah. cool. Especially in the, in the evening and as yeah. night be becomes cool. earlier and earlier mm -hmm. in the day, it'll be fun to be walking on campus. Oh, yeah. and, the afternoon and be able to see them in there lit up. That's so fun. I love it. Yeah. So um, I know this was a super duper long process. So I understand why you would be wanting to take a break from doing any sort of artsy things. <laughs> but I am just curious, as a fan of Ian Shiel art, do you have any other projects you've been working on or any plans for the future? <laughs> Anything that you want to, or even if it's just a really big one, I know you're graduating this year. So we're going to have yep. to figure out a way to follow along on your, your next artistic journey. So yeah. any plans for the future? That uh, yeah, kind of a cacophony. Um, not Good anything worth. super concrete right now, um, but you know, take, still finishing up some art classes here. I mm -hmm. finished my major last year, but um, still painting and uh, been enjoying that. I'm designing one last show in the theater Lovely. department uh, mm -hmm. next semester. Mm -hmm. awesome. uh, Caden Nessler is uh, the ball soprano, so very excited about that. Um, and actually, uh, I've been doing some work with uh, UND, their aerospace. Oh. Uh, um, Department, That's so cool. uh, and looking at helping them design or redesign some of their uh, spacesuits. <laughs> So that's what. Oh my God! That's, that's of where course, I've been. of course, you're helping UND redesign spacesuits. If there's something that Ian's going to be doing, it's it's space. Oh my gosh! Well, so uh, where where can we find you? How can we follow along with uh, your art? Do you have any sort of uh, portfolio or Instagram or anything? Yeah, yeah, I've got an artist Instagram. I think it's just Sheel Art and Design, uh, spelled S C H E E L E. Spelled Art and Design. Beautiful. Yeah, no spaces or anything. Yes. So. Awesome. Well, I am super excited to see um, what is to come uh, once you've got this, once you've got these degrees and you've got a little more time to focus on um, other things outside of school. Yes, yeah. And I mean, not that you didn't focus on uh, art things while you were in school. I mean, two and a half years. Who else can say that they worked on a project for two and a half years like that? So anyways, super, super happy that you were able to come in today. For yes, everybody at home who me. has not seen uh, this installation in ISC, go hop over and see it. It is so much cooler in person. I mean, the pictures were cool, but seeing those things hang above you and seeing all the details and all the time that went into this you can understand why this project took so so long and it's so so worth it I think the Thank payout you. was worth it I think it's wonderful so make sure to go pop over and see that make sure to follow Ian on uh, that shield art and design Instagram we think is what it's called yes, yeah. Um, awesome certain. yeah sounds good well Thank you, everybody, uh, for tuning in to this week's episode of Concordia On Air. We will be back here, same place, same time, next week. Um, have a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday.